Hi, I'm Michael Tijerina and I'm the Communications Director for Collin County Democrats. Welcome to Episode 2 of Dem Talks, Candidate Edition, where we talk the issues that matter to you and the people hoping to impact the future of Texas. Are we still calling it, who the hell should we vote for <laughs> in the next election? Yes. I'm Liz and I'm the President of the McKinney Area Democratic Club. Hi, I'm Misty Hook. I'm a local politics director for the Collin County Democratic Party. And I'm Chantal Kadala, voter enthusiast and registered voter here in McKinney. And no, we aren't calling it that <laughs> because we all know we should vote for Democrats. But who are these people who are on my ballot? Let's get to it. Election day is November 8th, but don't forget the early voting. Which is by far the best way to do it. It is. It starts October 24th and runs through November 4th. If you want to skip the lines, vote early. Last time we talked about the top of the ticket, the statewide races. Today we're going to focus on the local races. I'd argue that these are just as important as the races that get the most attention. If not more important. You have no chance of actually talking to the governor about your concerns unless you go to a Beto rally because he always talks to everybody. But your commissioner or state representative, they'll listen to you. Well, in Texas, they'll listen to you if you're Republican because Republicans control every statewide leadership position. That's why it's absolutely vital for us to vote in Democrats who believe in policy changes that impact us all. So if you think we should raise the legal age to purchase the weapons that murdered those kids and teachers in Uvalde, if you want to be able to use birth control or want your significant other to do so to ensure that you have the freedom to choose when you create your family, and if you want women to have the freedom to make their own health care decisions without a bunch of politicians controlling them, if you want change in Texas, you have to vote for all the Democrats. That's the bottom line. We need to vote out the Republicans trying to take away our freedoms, but we also want to make informed decisions when you vote. To do that, you need to know more about each candidate. That's why we're here today. So let's get going. I want to add that since these races aren't statewide, every candidate we're discussing today will not be on your ballot. These candidates represent geographical areas. Just in case you can vote for them though, we want to give you some information on all of them. And if you don't know which district you live in, you can simply Google Texas Tribune, who represents me? We just got gerrymandered, so I'm, it wouldn't surprise me if you don't know where you live in. Um, that will take you to a statewide newspaper that has a handy link that will allow you to enter your name and find out who represents you. We're going to start with the candidate for U.S. Representative for District 3, Sandeep Srivastava. His big issues are pretty popular in Texas. He wants to take on Big Pharma to make sure that people don't go bankrupt when they're buying medications that can save their lives. He also wants to lower insulin prices and enact common sense gun laws like raising the age to purchase weapons not to mention federal background checks, which are actually pretty popular, even with gun owners. And Republicans. <laughs> Plus, he believes the government should not be involved in women's health care choices. Since he's a first-generation immigrant, he has an important perspective in discussing immigration laws. We could really use someone representing us who's gone through the process of immigration and knows what could improve that process. Vote for Democrat Sandeep Srivastava for U.S. Representative District 3. The next candidate is running for the same position but in a different district. So it depends on where you live if you're able to vote for her. Democrat Ira Omir is running for U.S. Representative District 4. She's a huge defender of women's civil rights. She's also a big proponent of public education and building solid infrastructure for our economic growth in North Texas. When the Supreme Court opinion on Roe versus Wade leaked. You mean the one that warned us that they were planning to take away women's freedom to make our own health care decisions? Yeah, that one. <laughs> well, that next day, Eero Omir organized a rally in Plano. We marched from Planned Parenthood to the courthouse. And I swear the march fanned the, the flames of women's outrage here in North Texas. And some men. <laughs> She's a career educator who's ready to address the issues that stall us from reaching the true American dream and bring resources directly to the citizens of District 4. Vote for Democrat Ira Omir for Congress if you live in District 4. Our next candidate lives right here in North Texas, although he's running for the State Board of Education Place 12, which represents a lot of different counties in Texas. 
Alex Cornwallis is a senior cloud computing architect with a laser focus on public education. He's invested in improving learning conditions, modernizing our public school curriculum, and most of all, supporting teachers and students. He's running against a interesting person too. His opponent actually, as part of the official duties, suggested that our curriculum change the reference about slavery to involuntary, involuntarily re relocation. <laughs> we need people who will push back against the book banners who want to whitewash history. We need everyone to vote for Democrat Alex Cornwallis for the State Board of Education. Now we're getting close to home. Let's move on to Collin County. Let's talk Joshua Murray, who's running for Collin County Judge. You might think the county judge has something to do with courts, but this is Texas, and we like to name things so they don't make any sense at all. County judge actually uh, is the presider over the commissioner's court. It's kind of like being the mayor, but instead of, all, of only one city, it's the whole county. Josh Murray is one of the most dedicated candidates I've ever seen. He has attended and spoken at almost every commissioner's court meeting for the last 18 months. He's called out the current court on their subpar hiring record for public safety records. He's alerted the public to the county's abysmal response to COVID vaccines. And just recently, Josh Murray called the current county judge for voting to give himself a raise while at the same time not funding a position in the sheriff's office to investigate child predators. The guy he's running against refused to wear a mask during COVID and went into polling locations in the county to ensure they were following the rules about not making people mask. He, of course, didn't wear a mask. And then he tested positive for COVID just a couple of days later. Shocker. Who knows how many people he infected. Please, for the love of Collin County, vote for Dom Democrat Josh Murray for Collin County Judge. Yet another county position is district clerk. We have David Brignac running for this position. What does the district clerk do? I actually didn't know until about 30 seconds ago, but I Googled it, and they receive for filing and processing all documents and court cases, and they maintain the official court record. So it seems kind of important. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like it is. So if you want someone responsible, and when you're dealing with the court system, you really do, then vote for David Brignac for district clerk. Next up is Jonathan Cox. He's the Democratic candidate for State Senator for District 8. Although the title is State Senator, he's actually not running to serve the whole state. This, just the area in North Texas. Where we live. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Cox is a CPA and a pretty moderate Democrat who focuses on local control, protecting public education, and making sure our power grid is strengthened so Texans don't freeze to death while Ted Cruz goes to Cancun because, oh, sorry, because our money-hungry energy companies and politicians like Ted Cruz. <clears throat> <laughs> True. He's got my vote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plus, he's running against incumbent Angela Paxton. Oh, that name sounds familiar. You know, the wife of, oh, that's right, the attorney general who's under FBI investigation for seven years and still hasn't been quite uh, seeing his day in court. Anyways, go on. And yeah, his staff resigned to protest his actions. Yep, that's the same woman. Plus, she was on the stage at the January 6th interaction, insurrection right along with her husband. Clearly, she keeps very bad company. So let's all vote for Jonathan Cox for Texas State Senator. Now we're getting to the House districts. And just like some of the other races, whether you can vote for them depends on where you live. Democrat Sheena King, running for House District 61, has more precincts in the immediate McKinney area than any other House candidate. But her territory also goes far north of McKinney and also west over Frisco. Yeah, you gotta love it. When the Texas legislature draws the House districts to make them as Republican as possible. Gotta love it. <laughs> Sheena King is running a campaign of the highest integrity, and she's running against a guy who's on leave from the police department because he was arrested and charged with a felony. I have to say, we have some quality Republican candidates on the ballot this time. I know that was sarcasm, <laughs> but I'm not being sarcastic when I say that Sheena King truly is a quality candidate. She's level-headed, she's a huge proponent of public education and teachers. She's so amazing that her entire family volunteers their time every weekend to get her elected. 
Plus, this is the best picture ever of Sheena King with Eero Omir. Who wouldn't vote for a woman wearing pink boxing gloves to showcase her readiness to fight for women's freedom to make our own healthcare decisions? So vote for Democrat Sheena King for House District 61. Next up in the batting order is Jesse Ringness for House District 66. His district includes only a small part of McKinney, but he's still here working hard to earn your vote, even in this room. <laughs> well, the first thing to say about Jesse Ringness is that he has a true heart of service for the people. If there's a nonprofit in need of help, Jesse Ringness is there. If there's a city event that needs to be advertised, Jesse Ringness is there with his camera and his drone, giving a bird's eye view of the festivities. Plus, he knows what's important to families here in North Texas. After being the sole caregiver to his mom before losing her to MS, he dedicated himself to changing health care in this state. He knows we need to expand Medicaid so the state isn't losing billions of aid from the federal government. And he wants everyone to get the care that they deserve. Plus, look how cute this logo is. <laughs> <laughs> Vote for Democratic Jesse Ringness for House District 66. We'd also like to tell you about Kevin Morris, who is running for House District 67. A little tidbit about Kevin is he's a reformed Republican. Yes, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> he saw the error of his ways. Yes, and he's a really great candidate. Kevin Morris is what I like to call the every person's candidate. Just like all of us, he got fed up with his current representative not working for the people in District 67. So he decided to do something about it and run for office. Brilliant. He wants to true solutions for the district, uh, for the electric grid, healthcare, and public education. He knows we deserve better, and he's ready to work hard to get North Texas where it needs to be. Vote Democrat Kevin Morris for House District 67. Technically, that's everyone on the ballot in the McKinney area, but there are four more races we want to mention very quickly. These quality candidates are running in areas so close to us that we want to give them a shout out. If you're in the Plano area, you can vote for Mahalia Plesa for House District 70. With her experience in Austin as a legislative director helping write the laws put forth in the Texas legislature, she's ready to hit the ground running. So vote Democrat Mahalia Plesa if you're in House District 70. We'd also like to recommend Reverend uh, Urban Barrett running for Collin County Justice of the Peace. He promises to bring compassion to the Justice of the Peace position where he'd handle things like truancy, property disputes, and community-driven sentencing. Vote for Democrat Reverend Irvin Barrett for Justice of the Peace. If you're in Collin County, you may be able to vote for Jeff Williams, who's running for Collin County Commissioner's Court. This court is also made up of all Republicans. So it's time to bring a little diversity of thought to the table. Vote for Democrat Jeff Williams for Collin County Commissioner in District 4. Last, but certainly not least, if you're in the Collin County area close to Dallas, you already have a great U.S. Congress member in Collin Allred. He represents the 32nd District of Texas in the United States House of Representatives. Re-elect Representative Collin Allred for the 32nd District of Texas. We need him. We do. And that's a wrap on the candidates. Hey, thanks for listening today. We hope you learned a little something about these candidates who are on your ballot in November. And remember, don't stop at the top. Vote in every race there's a Democrat. Vote all the way down the ballot. And vote blue. We don't have straight line voting anymore, so you have to make your way all the way down. So vote for the Democratic candidates in every race. Your vote, along with all the other votes, has the power to make change happen in this state. And one other thing, if you know someone else who might need the information here, please share the video. You can always find links to it on our website at mckinneydemocrats.org. And vote early. And a lot. And send us money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, just vote <laughs> live. You can't vote wrong. We're not, we're not Republicans. <laughs> come on, come on, director. And...